If we take Iraq, for instance, Al-Qaeda in Iraq recently announced that it has merged with Jabhat al-Nusra in Syria. In return, Jabhat al-Nusra has pledged allegiance to Al-Qaeda's leader Ayman al-Zawahiri. Mr. President, whom are we fighting today in Syria? Are we fighting Al-Qaeda, armed terrorist groups or moderate fighters? Anybody carrying an illegal weapon and using it to assault innocent civilians is a terrorist, regardless of whether they belong to Al-Qaeda or any other group. Whilst it is possible to differentiate between Al-Qaeda affiliated and non-Al-Qaeda affiliated, the predominant group in Syria today is Jabhat al-Nusra. As to the term moderate fighters, this is an attempt by the Americans to justify their actions to the American people. After 9-11, the United States waged a costly war against the Taliban, only to discover several years later that it had actually achieved very little in Afghanistan. America's losses were huge. Hatred towards America continues to grow, and terrorism is becoming even more widespread. The only way to justify a dialogue with these groups and possibly play them against each other was to introduce the notion of good Taliban and bad Taliban. Today, the same is being done with moderate terrorists. There are no moderate terrorists, just terrorists. The terminology used to describe them, armed insurgents, armed opposition, is an attempt to portray this conflict to the American people as a conflict between an oppressed people and a dictator. However, today it is crystal clear that they are in fact terrorists with extremist ideologies. In the end, the only way for the Americans to justify their logistical, military and financial support, aptly labeled non-lethal aid or humanitarian aid, is by coining the term moderate fighters. But you mentioned earlier that Al-Qaeda is the predominant group in Syria in terms of numbers and armaments. In that case, is the West arming and funding Al-Qaeda? How can we understand this? In reality, the West's enemy one day is easily their ally the next. They do not have a problem switching sides when it suits their interests. Mali is a clear case in point. They are fighting Al-Qaeda in Mali, yet supporting Al-Qaeda in Syria and in Libya. In Mali today, the West is fighting the same groups it once supported in Libya. These same extremist groups are fighting in Syria today. This is what is called double standards, even triple standards or quadruple standards. Even if there are a thousand standards, they don't mind using them. They are happy to play any card against the country not meeting their requirements. Therefore, they're quite happy with Al-Qaeda coming into Syria for two reasons. Firstly, it removes some of these elements from other parts of the world where they are fighting them, Libya, Mali, Afghanistan, and so alleviating some of the military pressure on their forces. Secondly, the fighting in Syria causes a lot of destruction. So regardless of who wins in the end, whether it is the state, Al-Qaeda or any other group, Syria will pay the price, a hefty price. And we can already see the results of this destruction on our infrastructure and on people's horizons. So even if the state wins, it will be weakened, and hence the West would have achieved its objectives. But at the same time, what the West doesn't know, or might know but does not realize, is that this terrorism will spread and find its way back into Europe. The Western media is already rife with reports on the dangers of these terrorists returning to Europe. The West has paid heavily for funding Al-Qaeda in its early stages. Today, it is doing the same in Syria, Libya and other places, and will pay a heavy price in the heart of Europe and the United States. Another term we've been hearing recently is humanitarian intervention. Yes, it has been used recently. We've seen practical examples of the West's humanitarian intervention towards the Palestinians over the past 60 years. We've seen it also in Vietnam and in North Korea, where according to some figures, at least 3 million people were killed by the Americans. We've seen the results in Iraq, and you are more aware of these than anyone else, in Libya and now in Syria. I believe that their humanitarian intervention has one aim, the destruction of humans, of Syrians, plain and simple. The term is also being used in parallel with moral responsibility, and the moral responsibility they are advocating for lies in destroying the moral foundations of Syrian society, particularly its dignity and national rights.
In other words, they want to enshrine in us that we are submissive to them and that they control our destiny. What they should be aware of is that this does the complete opposite. We shall always stand against submission, against dependence, against defeatism.